thank you so much for joining me today. My name is Angela Huffman, and I'm delighted that you chose to spend some time with me. I've got a lot of great things planned to share with you um, for this Clubhouse meeting. Um, and I want to be sure that you are signed up for our newsletter, because that'll kind of let you know what the topics will be for upcoming um, Clubhouse meetings, as well as any like uh, oh, tutorials that we've done, or downloadables that you might be interested in, or oh, events that we have coming up. Um, I do a lot of traveling, so we post photos of some of the um, quilt shows that I get to travel to. So um, be sure that you have signed up for our newsletter. Um, you can sign up at that address there on your screen. There's also um, an address there in the description of the video as well if you need that. So um, in today's program, today um, in our clubhouse, we are going to talk about what quilt judges are looking for. And I have a special guest. So Pam Schartzer, scoot in here. Hi. <laughs> so um, I am lucky enough to live in a state. I live in Kentucky, and we have a an extraordinary um, fair, a uh, state fair here with loads of quilts that are um, entered. And so Pam, you have the incredible job of overseeing all the judging that goes into the Kentucky State Fair. It gets overwhelming, but it, there are some beautiful quilts in there. How many quilts did we have entered in this year's Kentucky State Fair? In the quilting division alone, there were 552 items that showed up. That's amazing. That's amazing. We are so lucky that we live in a place where the quilting art is thriving and it's alive and well. And I know lo lots of other people um, enjoy a community of the same um, thriving uh, quilting arts community as well. There's not a week go by that I don't have somebody ask me about the state fair. Yeah. So I'm, I'm pretty proud of what we've, wh wh how we've grown it and even the things that we've got in, in the hopper to, to change things yeah. from now on. Yeah. Well, so uh, one of the things that I'm asked all the time or, or told all the time, oh, I couldn't enter my quilts into competition because it's not good enough. So, so how do you know your skill level has reached a point where you are, are ready to enter into competition? If you're proud of that quilt and you're proud of the way that it looks, enter it. Yeah. It, um, you know, be proud of your work. And it doesn't necessarily, I find, that I don't enter it because I think it's going to win a ribbon. I mean, that would be great. But it's more like I want to see it hang in with all of its friends. You know, to walk down the aisle and see your quilt there hanging out in all of its glory with all of its little quilty friends is just fun. It is. There's a lot of people will come to the information desk and say, you know, my quilt's hanging over there. You yeah. Know? And they're proud of it, you know. And they're all, they'll come to the information desk and they'll be looking for you know, so-and-so's quilt, and they're proud of it even though they may not even be related to that person. Yeah, so what kinds of things are the judges looking for when they evaluate a quilt to decide if it's ribbon worthy? Um, do the colors all work together? Mm -hmm. Is there one color that stands out where the others that kind of overtakes? Um, they're looking at the edges of the quilt to see if it's straight. They're looking to see if the binding is done well not necessarily how it's done, but if it's done well. Um, and if it lays flat. Because even though those quilts are hung, you can still tell if the quilt is not flat. Yeah. Well, you have given us, and I, I really appreciate this, you have given us a, um, a downloadable sheet, and this is the actual judge's worksheet that is used at the Kentucky State Fair to evaluate quilts. Yes, ma'am. And so we've got a downloadable for you. The link is there on the screen. And um, this is, you just pop it in your cart, you check out as normal. There's no charge or anything for the, the sheet. But it may help you kind of see what they're after so that you can look at your quilt and see kind of what things you need to pay particular attention to. That is a great sheet because it, there's a lot of things on there that you wouldn't think that they would be looking at. But it's, you know, it covers a whole lot of territory. Yeah, it does. Well, what is like the major pitfall that you find over and over and over again that folks like either neglect or they aren't paying as much attention to that they should that would give them a little edge over everybody else? The main comment, what be it good or bad, that the judges will have is on the binding. Yeah, binding. <laughs> Make sure that the batting in your binding goes all the way to the edge. And if the mitered corners in your binding are stitched down, top and back. That's the biggest comment that we hear from the judges all, all day long. And so I'm thinking that it has to be 
like hand stitched to the back. It can't be, like a, if you're gonna do it machine stitched front and back, that's probably not what the judges are gonna be happy with. Not necessarily. Okay. If, the, if it's stitched down on the machine and if it's done well, that's fine. All right, and so to get a ribbon, do you have to quilt it to death? Does it have to be super densely quilted? Not necessarily. They are, they're pretty when they're done that way, but it doesn't necessarily have to be that way. If it, if the pattern kind of, uh, if the pattern and the fabric like to play well together, mm -hmm. they, that's fine. It, uh, if you don't like the, the real heavily densely quilted quilt, don't worry about it. it um, that quilt's going home with you, not the judge. Yeah, I love that. Stay true to yourself. Stay true to what you like. And remember, it's a judge's subjective opinion. Very much so. So I have seen in national shows where I might be at a national show and it wins best of show and then that same quilt goes to a different national show. It doesn't even get an honorable mention. So don't let it get you all bunched up when you get the judge's remarks back. Learn from it. Take what you can from it, but don't let it weigh on your shoulders. They take it to, don't take it to heart. Take it to construction. Make, all they want to do is get you to make a better looking quilt and a, a quilt that you can even be more proud of than what you are now. Yeah, yeah. Well, I really encourage you guys to, um, to find, it could be a county fair, right? It doesn't sure. have to be uh, the state fair. It doesn't have to be a national show. You can start out with your local county fair. Sure. And it will, be, it will be just as happy hanging in your county fair as it would hanging in, you know, the Paducah Houston shows of the world. Yeah. It, there are very few of us who will ever get a quilt to go to Houston or to Paducah. So a great place to start is your county fair or state fair. Yeah. Yeah, or even a guild. A lot of guilds have shows, and they may not even offer ribbons at their shows. It may just be a show. It may just be pretty things that we can look at. One of the great things that I always encourage as far as a guild show is take your quilt in there. Even if you've put it in there for um, just to brought it in for show and tell at your guild meeting, it still looks good hanging there. Yes. It'll still be happy with its friends. Yes, it will. Yes. Well, thank you so much, Pam. I know this is a really deep topic, and we could go on and on and on. But I love, thank you so much for giving us the, um, the, the forms that we can really hone in on the different topics and the different types of things that they're looking at. That's You're very welcome. helpful. You're yeah. welcome. Thank I've you enjoyed for it. Us. Yeah. yeah. Well, I would like to thank our sponsor, APQS. Um, we love you, APQS. APQS makes long arm quilting machines, both sit down and stand up. They are 100% handcrafted in Iowa, and they are loved the world over with a lifetime warranty. So thank you so much, APQS. We really appreciate all of your support. Um, I have a wonderful studio. You're not going to believe the studio that I want to show to you today. Um, and I did record this um, on a different day. So I did record it earlier because that was going to work out best for everybody. So um, I, we're going to take a look at it. It's Terry Smith's um, studio and she has a glorious space. So let's take a look at what Terry has to play in. Hi Terry, how are you? Hi Angela, how are you doing today? I'm doing great. Thank you so much for spending some time with us and allowing us to kind of be nosy in your space. What city are you in? London, Kentucky. Awesome. So I'm in Louisville, Kentucky. How far away is London from Louisville? About three hours, oh. two and a half. Awesome. And so how long have you been quilting? Uh, I've been a quilt maker for 30 years and started quilting on a stand-up frame with a little machine 10 or 15 years ago and I got Millie two years ago. Awesome, awesome and so show us your space if you would because you are a lucky girl. Okay. That is great so you have a whole building. A whole building, yes. So you must live on a lot of acreage in order to have a whole separate space. We live on a farm, we have 80 acres here Fabulous. And so you even have a sitting area in your sewing studio. I That's amazing do. to me. It's one of the favorite things because other quilters can come and spend time in the studio. Wonderful. Okay, so give us a little tour. Keep on moving through the studio because I want to see you've got your sitting area. And yeah, okay, I have a see. desk area. Uh -huh. And then um, here is my cutting, piecing, uh, measuring area. And then my son and husband's put these cabinets in, so I have all this wonderful storage and counter space. That is so nice. And that's where you piece. So you've got your piecing machine over there. Okay, so keep on going. Let me see what else you got. You have um, 
a cutting station there. I do, yes. Yeah. <clears throat> and then and you then, go into another room. Uh, yes, and then the back half of the room is all devoted to long arm quilting and Miss Millie. Yay, that's fabulous. And of course, I have to have a fan, so. <laughs> <laughs> I hear you, and you've got lots of great natural light in there. So, I do. So you have I an do. APQS Millie. What size table do you have? <laughs> I have a 12-foot table. But you started out in a smaller space, right? I'm sorry? You started out, your first machine, you said, was a smaller machine. You had it in a smaller space, correct? Yes. Yes. Actually, it was a um, very small machine. It had a nine-inch throat, and it was on a small frame that I think measured 10 feet, and I had it in a 12-foot guest room. Goodness. Yeah, so you certainly have expanded your little world, haven't you? I have. Well, take us back in the long arm room because I want to see where you keep your thread. I want to see how you keep all your, your long arm so. threads organized. I like things to be behind doors because I also write in this space. Mm -hmm. And so if I have my quilting things out, then I do ooh shiny and I'd stop writing. So. Right, yeah. So, so thread is in a cabinet. Oh, lovely. Awesome. And everything in the studio is kind of antique or early attic. Uh huh. And so you've got and some then, batting stored underneath your uh, frame, under your. Well, there's kind of there's kind of batting everywhere. Yeah. I have batting <laughs> in the corner, and then I have batting underneath. Uh -huh. I have um, I quilt for quilts of honor, and so the batting underneath is actually donated batting that we use on those quilts. Sure. And I see you kind of created your own batting bar down there too, because you've got. Like one half of the batting I did. bar. Yeah. So you have it kind of held up I just did. by some containers. I do. So the one part of the dowel rod rests on the frame over here, mm -hmm. and the other part rests on my containers, and those containers have scrap batting. And so kind of the studio rule is when those can't close anymore, i got to figure out something to do with those scraps. <laughs> yeah. That's a good rule to have. So where are your pantographs? Where do you keep all of your paper pantographs? So uh, on this side of the machine, um, I have a little tub mm -hmm. that holds pantographs and my leader grip and my ruler base. Yeah, awesome. And so you said something about that your husband made you some kind of uh, tray or storage tray, or or you got a storage tray you don't want your husband to take into the workshop, something like that. What is yeah, this storage yeah, tray you're talking yeah. about? So this is the table that I have behind my machine, and it keeps everything right where I need it. I've got my rulers and my markers and my you know my, the thread that I'm using for a particular job, my ironing board and pins, and then. Um, it's all right here. So all I have to do is turn around and get it. And it even has a drawer. So Kelly Klein told a bunch of people on her page about this on Facebook back at Christmas time. And I gave it to myself for Christmas. Is it like but something from an auto? My, is it an auto shop thing? It is. It's a shop thing on wheels. So I can roll it closer to the machine if I need it to. And uh, so my guys keep trying to co-opt it for their workshop. Yeah, I would imagine. Now show me that sign on the wall because I love the sign on your wall. What is that? Oh, that's so true. Do not let the perfect be the enemy of the good. That is so true. And I really need it back here to remind me of that. <laughs> yeah, I'm sure. I'm sure. And then all your back, wide back fabrics are over there on your left side. Yeah, I can't. Well, this is sort of the space. It's the wide, uh, wide backs. It's the smaller pieces of batting, and then it's also customer quilts in home goods bags because a friend of mine gave me a whole bunch of those bags, and so when quilts come in the door, that's where they go. Awesome. Well, show me what's on your frame because I want to see what you're working on, and then I got I got some questions for you. That's beautiful. So, uh, this is going to be a custom job, and I plan on checking out your video from last month, because look at all those wonderful hexies. Look at all those hexies. That's perfect. That's perfect. So, Terry, can you turn the camera around so that we can see your lovely face? Because I want to know um, what three things would you recommend to your bestie? Not necessarily quilt related, but what, what three things would you are you loving right now? 
Well, I am um, loving that the butterflies and hummingbirds are buzzing around outside my studio. I have a perennial bed out there, and we planted it just for that reason. So I get to see that out the windows. And um, the other thing I'm really loving is we have a 15-month-old German Shepherd, and I discovered the Kong Frisbee or Kong Flyer. And so 10 minutes with that, and she is ready to lay down and behave herself, and I can get back to quilting. <laughs> Maybe they make those for kids, too, because I could have use that for my, for my kiddos um and then last thing you said something about uh fresh from the garden right now that you're oh loving. absolutely fresh from the garden tomatoes Love that. so um, yeah. you know those aren't going to be around much longer but we're sure enjoying them right now, kind of swimming in them a little bit oh i would love to come by and take them off your hands i think they taste like summer Come by any time. i got a place for you to sit and visit. Awesome. All right. Well, thank you so much, Terry. Thank you for allowing us to be nosy in your studio. You have a lovely, lovely space, and I appreciate your time today. Thank you. Bye. See you soon. So Terry started off with her quilting room in a little guest bedroom and then it grew from there and now she has that glorious space. But I hope that you heard her say that, that she made it work in that little room. I know that my first um, quilting space in my house was in the dank basement with the little tiny basement window. So you don't have to um, be spoiled like Terry is and have this glorious whole separate building. Um, but isn't it fun to see how people have their um, their studio set up? So thanks again, Terry. It was great to spend a little time with you. Um, I want to talk to you about some of my favorite things currently. So right now I'm really digging circle rulers especially. So I pulled a few out. Um, these are um, uh, Quilter's Groove uh, Pro Circles. This is the four inch. And what I love about the, the Quilter's Groove rulers is that they are etched. They give me the quarter inch um, echo lines are etched as well as all of my north south and my diagonals um, and then one half of it also has my um, half inch lines there um, etched in and so that is the four inch and this one is much bigger i don't know that i can get it all on screen um, let me just make sure this one is a seven inch so you know, when you're looking at circle rulers, and um, it's one of those things you kind of need all different sizes to fit in your different size border. But I would say that the most uh, popular, most useful size generally is going to be the three and the four inch, because typically, you know, our our quilt blocks are on a 12 inch grid and so they could be um, a 12 inch block and so they could be a three by three grid or a four by four grid so that's why typically that four inch and three inch are the most popular um, size for circle rulers and I have a series of articles that are in Quiltmaker magazine um, called rule your quilt and so the one in the October November edition is all about circle rulers and I have downloadable worksheets and um, downloadable diagrams as well so I'm going to put that link up on the screen so that you could go and see that article um, and again download those uh, worksheets and the past um, editions of those rule your quilt articles are also um, can be found uh, when you go to that link um, if you just search for uh, rule your quilt you'll find them there so and those are all I think going to be helpful to you as you start to explore um, rulers uh, specifically circle rulers are one of those things that I'm kind of on a kick on right now so um, in our Quilted Joy Clubhouse each month there on Facebook I do ask people to submit quilts that I can then um, design on so we can kind of you can see how I break a quilt down and how I think about a quilt and hopefully that'll help you when it comes time for you to decide to what put on what to put on your quilt and recently I was in Grand Rapids and I had um, a gal come up to me and say you know that she really wanted to see somebody look at a panel quilt and how to quilt a panel quilt and I will say so panel quilts some people call them cheaters I don't like that so much because I really look at a panel quilt as being a sandbox that we can play in and it gives you a space to kind of experiment in and it's low risk because you paid I don't know eight ten dollars for the panel you didn't spend months piecing it so you can really kind of explore some things and and kind of get your your sea legs under you as you start to look at some quilts so Gail I chose your kitty cat um, panel quilt and um, I really like what Gail did here is that she um, put it uh, the panel in the center and then she did pieced borders around it so she really elevated it and she gave a lot of great places to play so I've got her quilt pulled up here um, on screen and I'm just gonna zoom in so that we can see a little bit better her little kitty cat so there's her little kitty cats um, 
uh, center panel. So I just want to talk about what I did first. And generally what I'm going to do first is stitch in the ditch just to kind of nail everything down. And then I'm just going to go around her little kitty cat. So um, I let me zoom in one more time so that you can see what I'm doing. It's going to get a little fuzzy here, but you'll be able to see a little bit better. So I would actually go around my little kitty cat um, bodies and just echo around. And one of the things that this is teaching you is how to follow a shape with your needle, which is one of those skills that you're going to need to kind of play with both for sit down machine quilting and stand up machine quilting. So I'm going to go around my little kitty cat bodies, around their little paws, and then I'm going to head back down and I'm going to do one side first and then go up the other. Now there's a mouse sitting on this little kitty cat's uh, tail. I'm going to go around the little mousy tail, up his little head, little ear, forehead, ear, back down, and head back down my little kitty cat. Um, and do this whole, um, this whole little cat. So let's take a look at what that looks like. So let me go to the next one. And I did it in, in a pink color here. Um, it wasn't until later that I figured out that maybe pink probably wouldn't show as well. So I'm going to draw in blue, but I've got these pre-done in pink. So I'm just going to scroll up here. So I went around all these little birdies, all these little kitty cats, and just um, just kind of nail those down. On this larger cat down here, you can see I even went into the stripes and kind of echoed some of those stripes. So went all the way around my little kitty cats. Okay, so for the next one that I did, the next um, thing is I wanted to get the top section, this cat's word, um, kind of nailed down. So I just did a wiggle line rather than a straight line because um, it's just easier and I don't have to pull out a ruler. So I did a little wiggle line. And then when I hit here, I just fill that in with some kind of fill. So I'm doing a meander, but you could do whatever fill you are playing with. Maybe it's a spiky fill, like a cat tail or a curly one. When I hit a letter, I'm gonna travel around and echo around that letter just like I did with my cats. Um, and then I'm gonna sneak around and keep going until I have this whole area kind of filled in. Again, when I hit a letter, I'm gonna go around my letter and keep on keeping on. So I would fill that whole space. So let's say I go the whole, the A, the C, and I'm gonna make sure that when I finish my meander at the end, I wind up over on this side because now I'm gonna dip down and do the same little echoey thing. See how there's like a wood grain or panel that they're in front of? So I'm just gonna travel down there and rather than straight lines, cause straight lines are hard, I'm gonna do a wiggle line. Now you're gonna to wanna to think about how you load this, right? Because if you have an 18 inch throat machine or a 22 inch throat machine, you're going to want to think about whether you load this horizontally or vertically. It's going to depend on the size throat machine that you have so that you have as much space that you can possibly reach um, in one pass will, will be helpful to you. So let's take a look at what that looks like. So Gail, there you go. So I've got my little wiggle lines, my little um, meanders around cats, and I have my little um, kind of paneling. And then when I hit the bottom, they're like standing on uh, wood of some sort. So when I hit the bottom, I went through here and I just did like little knots in the wood. Yeah, and then knots in the wood. So it's, it's still almost like a meander line. It's just kind of a flattened spiral to give me knots in the wood. And that's something, there's loads of different um, tutorials out there that you can find for free motion. And so something that kind of looks like a wood grain would be super, super fun in there. Okay, so let's see how that looks. So I'm gonna go to the next one. All right, so in the, um, in those setting triangles that you have going all the way around, I'm gonna back up one and go back to this one we were just at. In these setting triangles that you have all the way around, what I did was something super simple and it's just lowercase e, lowercase l, lowercase e, and then I sneak to the next triangle, lowercase e, lowercase l, lowercase e, and then sneak to the next uh, triangle. And to me, that kind of looks like, um, oh, like yarn, you know, that they've been playing with yarn and got the string all over the house. Um, my cats do that too. So let's take a look at how that looks. All right, I'm gonna zoom in so that you can see that. All right, so there's all of my little e's and l's going all the way around all those little triangles. And so that's where I um, then started to think about the, um, the outside edges of, my, of the quilt. And if you notice, I'm gonna pan over here, this is a checkerboard 
and it's a, a set of two, yeah? And if I go up to the top, now it's a checkerboard, but it's a set of three. And if I go to the bottom, now it's a checkerboard set of three. And if I go to this side, it's a checkerboard set of two. So we have asymmetrical borders, and that's going to influence your design choices. Because what I thought of it um, was that I'd like to see is in these sets of two where little cat paws, little cat paws like walking up the side of the quilt. Um, and so when I started thinking about that, I thought, okay, but it's not going to work down here in this bottom border because I've got a set of three and my kitty cat um, doesn't walk that way. So I needed to change what I was going to do in that bottom and top border. So first let's look at how you could draw um, a kitty cat, a uh, kitty cat paw. So I'm going to go to a blank screen here. And I'm just going to draw my screen. And by the way, I'm using a free program. It's called Paintbrush. I, I'm a Mac girl, so it's just something I got in the App Store. But there are loads of things that you could draw on photos in your paint program that came with your computer. Um, and then I'm just using a, <clears throat> pardon me, a graphics tablet. It acts as a mouse, but it's in the shape of a pencil and allows me to draw um, on the screen more easily than with a mouse. So for my kitty cat paws, I'm going to start out with um, like, a, like a kidney bean shape. And that's their little pad. And then I'm going to travel around and I'm going to go one loop, two loop, three loop, four loop. And then I'm going to head up and do another kind of kidney bean shape and travel around one loop, two loop, three loop, four loop. And then I'm going to travel around. So yeah, are these specifically anatomically correct um, paw prints? No, but it's okay because this whole thing is stylized, so I'm fine. So let's draw it here. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to start up here just so that you guys can see it better. So I would start that whole kidney bean shape and travel around. And then I'm just, it's like little E's. One, two, three, four. Travel around. Kidney bean. One, two, three, four. Travel around. Kidney bean. One, two, three, four travel around and I'm going to keep on walking up my quilt till I have my kitty cat paws going up the quilt. So let's see what that looks like. So I'm going to zoom in so you can see that a little bit better. And again, I did these in hot pink. So there's my little kitty cat paws traveling up that side all the way. I left this top space empty. Let's see how they start on this right side of the quilt. Again, they start down here, little kitty cats walking up, walking up, walking up, walking up, this whole little side uh, of the quilt. Okay, so now I was like, well, what am I going to do with these checkerboards up here? And really the simplest thing to do would be just straight lines. And if you don't want to pull a ruler out, you could also do wiggle lines. Yeah, um, I'm just going to do straight lines. So I'll go straight lines up and then down, and then I would come back the other way, and again, cross those, and just keep going until I have a whole checkerboard here. It's a little hard to do straight lines on the, on the screen. So let's take a look. I've got it all done for you, so you can see here, Gail. So there's my checkerboards at the top. Yeah, and there's my checkerboards carrying down through the kitty cat paws. I'm gonna zoom in so you can see a little bit better. All right, so there's that checkerboard at the top. Here's my little kitty cat paws. Checkerboard continues on behind those kitty cat paws. Notice how I traveled. So my kitty cat paws is in the green. I got a kitty cat paw, and then I just traveled up and did my little kidney bean shape and my little uh, toes of my paw, and then traveled up, did my little kidney bean shape. And you know, this one isn't so much kidney bean as it is an elliptical shape, a uh, flattened circle, but it's fine. Like the one up here is more kidney bean shape, but I, I, I'm not that worried about it. I think it's cute. I don't want you to get too hung up on perfection. Perfection kind of kills the, kills the vibe. Just have some fun with these little panel quilts. And then there you see that checkerboard down there at the bottom. Okay, so let's talk about um, the, the negative space then inside the quilt, um, this inner border here. So one of the things I thought about was, you know, you got these cats with those swirly tails. So my kitty cats, when it's time to eat in the morning and they're following me down the hall, trying to trip me on the way to the foodie bowl so I don't forget to feed them, they got their little curly tail. And it's not a pointy tail, right? It's a little fluffy curly tail. So I thought that was pretty um, cat-like and could do those in all four corners. And then for these areas here, like little balls of yarn, is what I thought about making little yarn trees. So I went up 
I did a swirly yarn, came back down, went up, a little swirly yarn, came back down, up, a little swirly yarn, came back down, and then kept, kept that going. So I could do all this in one pass, right? I could do E, L, E, and then do my little yarn tree, E, L, E, and then do my little yarn tree. E, L, E, and so that could all be done in one pass. So let's take a look at that. All right, so I'm gonna zoom in so you can see what I did. So I did use that pink, pink, there's my little kitty cat tail. So I'm gonna show you the final version. Okay, all right, Gail, so we've got our kitty cat paws traveling up the side. We got our curly cat tails in the four corners, of that peace border. We got our E's and our L's and our little, I just did plain lollipop trees here. I didn't do the little spiral in, but I kind of like the little spiral in. And then around the actual panel, we just went around the shapes that the panel gave us. So that's a great place to play and to try out free motion designs and kind of get your um, get your sea legs under you and get to know your machine a little bit better. You know, um, panel quilts are just a wonderful, wonderful sandbox for you to um, try new things without the pressure of feeling like, oh, I spent all this money and I did all this you know, uh, piecing and now, you know, what if I ruin it or what if I do something I don't like and I got to pick it all out. It's just a panel, so play. Um, so Gail, I hope that you enjoyed that. If you would like to submit a quilt for me to design, um, you can um, join our clubhouse, the Quilt of Joy Clubhouse there on Facebook. And each month I do a little call out, a little shout out and have people post a quilt. And then I'll pick one, you never know which one I'm gonna pick and um, play with it um, here in our meetings so that you can kind of get to know my thought process and think about the quilts that are gonna cross your path soon. Um, all right, so in the clubhouse, we also have a lot of folks who submitted um, different photos of their completed quilts. So I just want to um, kind of uh, give a shout out to everybody and don't forget to share your quilts in the clubhouse because we always love seeing what you're working on. So I've got some show and tell here to show you the, some quilts that we can all um, drool on. And Susan, so Susan was in my class when I taught up in Michigan um, in June and Susan did a Laura Heine um, quilt with me and she did the, the seahorse and don't you love the seahorse I just she did such a great job and I really love the way that she quilted it um, and it was just simple lines just a simple grid and there's even um, that little seahorse friend um, he's super cute so great job Susan thank you so much for posting that I just love seeing what my students create Athena posted this one now Athena says she's getting to know her Millennium I would say Athena you and your Millie are getting along just fine um, she she posted um, this is a great quilt to play on you've got all those kind of thin sashing spaces thin border spaces that you can play with feathers or swirls um, it looked like you had a ball Athena great job Diana posted this one this is a table runner um, got some great negative space there to play with she used the same kind of um, little arched um, uh, flower design in each of those pinwheel blocks and then did some ruler work there in those setting triangles beautiful job Diana Albie O posted posted this one. Um, this one has lots of great ruler work in it. I really love how she tucks some things into that negative space, that, that dark blue um, background that all the, the quilt blocks float on. So she posted, she um, quilted this little Mariner's uh, compass, Mariner's star there in um, the background of the quilt. I love it when you kind of have to hunt and look for things in a quilt top. That's uh, super fun. And Susan posted this super modern great quilt with the raindrops dripping and they hit the ground, splash up. Um, really fabulous job Susan that's a great uh, great quilt and then Tina Tina and I met um, at the Grand Rapids quilt show I was actually walking to the to the um, the trash can throwing some stuff away and came around the corner and and she um, she she said oh my goodness and so we got a picture and it was lovely meeting Tina and I met a bunch of other folks too in Grand Rapids um, it's always fun to see you guys out and about um, I will be at other quilt shows coming up um, the rest of the year so do look out for me and say hello if you see me because I really would love um, to meet everybody um, so I appreciate 
appreciate the time that you spend with me. I know that you have a lot of choices of where you can go to you know, talk about quilts and learn about quilting, and I just really appreciate that you trust and that you spend your time uh, with me. Um, I do ask that if you have the chance to review us on Google, that helps other people find us. And I read each one personally, and I really appreciate the time that it takes um, for you to do that. And I would appreciate if you know somebody who might enjoy watching one of our Clubhouse meetings and let them know about it. Um, both sit down uh, machine quilters on a, on a domestic machine as well as, you know, the fanciest of the fancy pants uh, stand-up machine. We'll get something out of our Clubhouse meeting. So share it and I think your friends will appreciate it. Okay, so the next meeting that we're going to have is going to be on Wednesday, October the 2nd at 1 o'clock Eastern, and we are going to talk about quilting with straight edge rulers. I would say that right now I'm in love with, with circle rulers only because I'm kind of diving in there pretty deep with them, but the most use, the most useful ruler I have is a straight edge ruler. I can get so many designs out of that straight edge ruler. So um, circle rulers and elliptical rulers and all kinds of templates are, are fun, but the most used one I would say is a straight edge. So we're gonna look at straight edge rulers and different designs with straight edge rulers in our next meeting. So join me on October the 2nd at one o'clock um, for that. And do, um, do follow us on Facebook and Instagram, especially on Instagram. I do post photos when I'm at quilt shows of the quilts that I see that kind of speak to me. They aren't necessarily ones that have a ribbon hanging on them. They're just ones that I really love looking at it at and um, talk about why, you know, why they're speaking to me. There's so much inspiration you can get from attending a quilt show. So um, follow me there and I look forward to seeing you. If you are going to be at a quilt show and you see me, please stop and say hello. It's always wonderful to meet you. So I will see you in the clubhouse and I thank you so much for joining us today and I'll see you next month. Bye.